Good morning to everyone and warmly welcome uh, on behalf of the European uh, Network Integrate, uh, the SINCIA project, and on behalf of IUCN and EFI to our webinar on the EO4 strategy, strengthening um, for ecosystem service and integrated forest management. Um, um, sorry, I just need to scroll this. Strengthening forest for ecosystem services and integrated forest management for biodiversity and climate change. My name is uh, Georg Winker. I'm head of the governance program at EFI, and my job will be this morning to guide you through our program. Um, next slide, please. And the next slide. I start with some uh, housekeeping rules. Um, this webinar will be recorded and it will be available online afterwards. Um, and we will only speakers and moderators will be unmuted and visible via video and all other attendees will be muted and video will be disabled. So if you try to make yourself visible, don't be frustrated. It's not possible in this setting. But uh, we very much ask you still to engage and I'm sure you will be engaging a lot. So um, please use the question and answer function that you will find down in the Zoom menu to put comments and questions. Uh, you can use it uh, throughout the webinar at any time. Please write who you are and address whom you wish to respond. That will help us in the panel to approach the right people uh, you want to address. We will ask questions that you put um, to speakers. How, depending how many questions we will have, we will of course have to select. And there's also a possibility that we will put you live but you will be warned um, before. And for more information on the projects, um, I think this will come later. Um, so to the next slide, please. So what are the main uh, objectives of this webinar? Well, the idea was born when the strategy, EU4 strategy was, was out. Um, looking at the document, uh, colleagues from IOCN and EFI and from the European Network Integrate and the Sincere project we thought this is really an interesting document and we would like to reflect with different policymakers and experts on the following questions. What is the potential of the new EO forest strategy for incentivizing forest governance and management for multiple ecosystem services? Um, as you will see, this is a question at the heart of both the European Network Integrate and the Sincere project. We were further wondering also how to strengthen support to forest owners to ensure forest resilience in the provision of ecosystem services, keeping in mind 60% of Europe's forests of the EU forests are privately owned. We were also then broadly wondering what in the view of, of different uh, policy actors, what is missing, what is good, and what are the key elements to turn this strategy into action. And finally, specifically for the European Network Integrate, we were very interested in understanding, so what could be the role of that network uh, in facilitating the discussion and implementation process of the strategy. Next slide, please. All these thoughts uh, resulted in the following program. Um, after my introduction, you will get a short introduction into the SINCIA project in the Integrate Network by my colleague Marco Lorfridge and then Christoph Dürr, the chair of the Integrate Network. And then we, of course, would like to know uh, what we are actually discussing about and talking about. We will have a um, presentation. Raphael Lelouvier uh, from the European Commission, a presentation that has been jointly prepared by DG Agri and DG Environment on the strategy. And then we have a really interesting whole panel discussion with different uh, participants that I will introduce a bit later in this meeting. You can probably see them on the shared screen. And then we open up um, to everyone to questions and answers. We'll hopefully have time to collect some really interesting questions and get some really interesting answers. We will conclude then the webinar with uh, the short interventions by Chantal from Ham from IUCN and Mark Palai, our director from EFI. And I think the concluding remarks will be just saying thanks to all of the participants. Next slide, please. So then let's kick off the webinar um, with two short presentations on the SINCIA project and the Integrate project that are sort of the two uh, integrated network that are the two organizing projects slash networks behind this webinar. I hope my colleague Marco has arrived and can start from here introducing the Sincere project. And Marco, please keep it to five minutes. Thank you, Georg. Next slide, please. 
Uh, so SINCERE, SINCERE stands for uh, Spring Innovations for Forest Ecosystem Services in Europe, where the key word is innovations, because this is a innovation action within the Horizon 2020 program, and it lasts from 2018 to 2022. Next slide, please. So uh, here you can see the logos of our partners. We have 21 active partners, which are equally split between research organizations and innovation action leads, where the former group is, for example, represented by KU Leuven, C4, and uh, the European Forest Institute. And the latter group is with the Danish Forest Center, and the Finnish Forest Center, or Fongo di Borgotaro Association, mushroom pickers in Italy, or Nature Park Medvenica Public Institution, an organization of managing the protected area in Croatia. Uh, thank you. Next slide, please. So the, the challenge. Uh, people's demands uh, of forests are dynamic and they are evolving, where provisioning ecosystem services are not the only uh, forest management objective and the importance of regulating and cultural ecosystem services is, is increasing, especially in relation to the Green Deal and to the climate change issues. We also have to recognize that there are synergies in trade-offs in their supply and that uh, things all don't really work out in all of the scales, but in the project, we tried through innovative mechanisms, try to, we try to find win-win uh, solutions. Of course, with respect to uh, responses of forest owners and managers, another important stakeholders operating in the complex policy framework of both of the local, national, and the EU level. Thank you. Next slide, please. So, uh, Sincere has several objectives. Uh, can you click, please, once more, please? Uh, the first one is to review and analyze uh, innovations relating to forest ecosystem services, which is basically a scientific review of the current body of knowledge with the collection of primary data on the opinions of forest owners and managers. Then uh, we, in our 11 case studies, through a learning architecture co-design these innovative mechanisms in a participatory manner so that they have a chance to be truly implemented. Next slide. And then in the work packages two and three, we truly support our innovation action leads and key local stakeholders in implementing and evaluating these innovation cases, then improving on them. Next. And we do so by synthesizing knowledge across these innovation actions, uh, where we find the common denominators in all of them. We assess their upscaling potential and find transferable innovative uh, models that uh, we, for which we already had a couple of uh, events. Next. And then, uh, we don't only operate on this bottom-up approach, but also on top-down approach to assess what the overall European policy framework for secured provision of forest ecosystem services is. Next. And then we combine these two okay. levels into policy lessons on the, which we can share to interested stakeholders in all kinds of possible channels. Next. And from now, you could already see that as it is an no. innovation action, the largest we, cases, we rely upon our yeah. innovation cases. Here you can see short summaries of them. For instance, the Danish and the Belgium case are basically a reverse auctions where uh, forest owners bid for, manage, uh, for securing biodiversity protection. Uh, in Russia, we made a draft new law introducing forest ecosystem services and a different uh, way to uh, rent forests on a national level. Or in the uh, Italian case, an application to select what mushrooms could be picked in which area and then automatically issue permits for it. Next. But you can uh, see all of this and much, much more on our website, Sincere Forest EU. And please also check it out because next week we have a two-day conference where we will try to present everything that we have found and what can be upscaled to European level. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. That was uh, Marco Lofridge, Senior Researcher in the Bioeconomy Program of EFI and Project Manager of Sincere. We move directly on um, to the second uh, organizing uh, entity, so to say, or project. In this case, it's a network. 
the European Policy Network Institute, and I'm really happy to introduce Christoph Dürr, uh, the head of the section Forest Ecosystem Services and Silviculture at the Federal Office of the Envi for the Environment in Switzerland, called Bafu also. He's a person much involved in international forest and forest policy affairs. And now he is also here because he is the, currently the chair of the European Network Integrate. Christoph, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Georg, for uh, inviting me to present Integrate Network uh, today and for the kind introduction. So on the next uh, slide, you can already see what is uh, the network all about. Integrate, this comes from the integrated forest management. Uh, we are focusing on a multifunctional forest management. This is our, our focus. And within that one, we mainly uh, address the question how to align biodiversity conservation and sustainable wood production. On the next slide. Um, on the next slide, you can see also that it is uh, done at three levels. So we are working at uh, decision making policy level. We are giving uh, um, inputs to the at the policy level, but we also have a strong network of forest pra practitioners and managers, and we also have a strong link at the level of research and acad academic uh, knowledge. And uh, the network was initiated uh, by the Prague Declaration, and it is then that the focus always was then being on the nature conservation enhancement in sustainable managed forests in Europe. On the next slide. Next, please. You can see uh, who is member of the network. There are 19 European countries. They are uh, shown in, in green color at the left side. So there is still some scope for other countries to join, but 19 is already a lot, a lot. Then there is a rotating chair. So I have the privilege to be the chair uh, last year and this year. And the, the currently the, the facilities of the network is um, done by a project funded by the German BML in Bonn. Next, please. You can see some of the activities we have done the last year and this year's. So uh, unfortunately, we had many very nicely planned events with excursions. We had to transfer it uh, to webinars, which are also nice, but uh, not the same. But uh, this is what we have done, we, how we were dealing with the situation. You see also on the policy issue, we have uh, provided a joint input to the public consultation process on the new EU forest strategy. And it was really a negotiation also amongst our 19 members. What can we say and what can we address to and what, how can we give an input to the policy from our experience uh, in the network? We have in mind also on communication and on the next slide, you can see also our next events. One is the one today. Then there is one which was already announced uh, next week by the Sincere project. And we have also a meeting in Switzerland end of October, which then will be one of the first physical meetings in Neuchâtel in Switzerland. Next. This is the part of the practical uh, work uh, which is done in the integrated network, these uh, demonstration sites, these martelloscopes. You can see there are more than 150 sites in Europe with 70,000 trees, which, are, which can be used at scientific level, but also at demonstrations and discussions and dialogue with the practitioners to learn from each other. And they are widely used uh, at the moment. Next. 
And this was it. This was the presentation of the integrated networks. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christoph. And if you looked at the titles of the events that have been done in the integrated network, you see that this webinar is perfectly in line with the main idea to talk from different perspectives about multiple forest ecosystems and specifically biodiversity integration, sustainable forest management. We move on and now uh, we will hear a presentation on the issue we want to discuss about today. I'm really um, happy and glad to introduce Raphael Lelouvier. I hope I pronounced it correctly. He's my bad uh, school French. Uh, he is a policy officer for his protection and sustainable forest management in DG environment in the European Commission. And he will give a presentation that has been jointly prepared by DG uh, APRI and DG and to my understanding. Raphael, I haven't seen you yet, but I heard you are there. The floor is yours. I hope uh, you will uh, kick it up from here. Okay, hello everyone. Um, yeah, I see that uh, I can't share my screen, but I think that you're sharing uh, it on my behalf. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so you, uh, your pronunciation was perfect, no worries. Um, so uh, as you said, I'm Raphael Bouvier, uh, I'm a policy officer at the European Commission's Director General for the Environment. Um, and I'm also really happy to be here and to give you a, a brief introduction to this uh, new forest strategy uh, that was published in uh, July this year. Um, can we have the next slide, please? Okay, so the uh, European Forest Strategy was announced in the European Green Deal communication of December 2019, uh, where it says that building on the 2030 biodiversity strategy, the Commission will prepare a new, new forest strategy covering the whole forest cycle and promoting the many services that forests will provide. And uh, the strategy will have as its key objectives effective afforestation uh, and forest preservation and restoration in Europe. So this was, uh, in a way, the Commission's mandate to develop its forest strategy. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Um, at its core, uh, the strategy has the economic, social and environmental functions of forests. Um, the uh, Commission in there is really highlighting the uh, multifunctional role of forests, um, so be it for income, for rural areas, for climate, um, biodiversity, culture, sports, well-being, the list goes on and on. And uh, important is also the contribution of foresters and the forest-based value chain for achieving a sustainable and climate neutral economy by 2050, um, and also ensuring that all ecosystems are uh, restored, resilient and adequately protected. Next slide, please. Yeah. So um, the first part of the strategy tackles uh, the first main objective uh, to support uh, the socioeconomic functions of forests for uh, thriving rural areas and uh, boosting the forest-based bioeconomy within sustainable boundaries. This uh, objective is then divided into the promotion of a sustainable bioeconomy for long-lived food products, ensuring the sustainable use of wood-based bioenergy, promoting a non-wood forest-based bioeconomy, which uh, notably includes ecotourism, and developing skills for sustainable forest-based bioeconomy. Next slide, please. Um, so to achieve these objectives, the new forest strategy includes many concrete actions. Now, um, I have a lot of text on my slide, um, but uh, they do have the merit of displaying all of the actions of the strategy, and uh, you might be happy to share these slides uh, when, when we share them. Um, in any case, I will not go through each and every action, but highlight just a few which uh, either stand out or are especially interesting for today's webinar. So, for example, to promote uh, long-lived food products, the Commission will develop a roadmap for reducing uh, whole life cycle carbon emissions in buildings and establish a methodology to quantify the climate benefits of food construction products and other building materials, and, and also to strengthen this uh, and well, non-wood forest-based products and services, the Commission will uh, promote the use of the Natura 2000 logo in such cases. Next slide, next slide please. Um, and again, to, to highlight the multifunctional role of forest on uh, the many services they provide uh, beyond wood, the uh, Commission will promote collaboration between the tourism sector, uh, forest owners and nature protection services and, uh, and also promote standards and norms for ecotourism. 
Next slide, please. Um, so next, uh, the strategy tackles protecting, restoring, and enlarging uh, the use forest to combat climate change, uh, reverse biodiversity loss, and ensure resilient and multifunctional forest ecosystems. Uh, this is again divided into uh, protecting primary and older forests, in ensuring forest restoration and sustainable forest management, um, re- and afforestation of biodiverse forests, uh, and also financial incentives for forest owners and managers. Next slide, please. Um, so again, these objectives are accompanied by relevant actions. And here, for example, the uh, Commission is, is currently developing definition of primary and all growth forests um, as they, they will have to be strictly protected according to the EU biodiversity strategy. Um, together when the states, the Commission is also developing guidelines for closer to nature forestry practices to, in a way, reconcile productive forest management with climate and especially biodiversity roles uh, and objectives. Um, this will be uh, accompanied by a voluntary certification scheme for uh, so-called closer to nature forest management. And uh, as announced in the EU biodiversity strategy already, the Commission plans to plant 3 billion additional trees by 2030. Um, and this particular pledge will also be accompanied by a citizen monitoring tool, which is called Map My Tree, which is currently being developed. Um, this tool will allow uh, to follow the implementation of the pledge. Um, and here, of course, in accordance uh, to the guidelines and afforestation that are being developed, uh, there will be a really strong basis on planting the right tree at the right place at the right time. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, and since uh, better forest protection, uh, restoration, and more uh, biodiversity-friendly forest management won't happen without motivation and, and the engagement and action of, of forest owners and managers, these things uh, need to be economically viable, and, and that is why the Commission wants to support the development of ecosystem service payment schemes and, and, and provide advice and technical guidance for them. Um, and by the end of 2021, uh, it will also present an action plan to promote forest-related remuner remuneration schemes. Um, and uh, another fact is also that uh, there's a very low share of rural development funds that are currently, uh, so for forest measures that are currently being used, and so the Commission uh, will strive to uh, strongly increase the uptake. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, now the next part tackles the uh, strategic forest monitoring, reporting, and data collection. Um, this is divided into improving, improving use of Copernicus products uh, and other remote sensing data and ground-based monitoring, um, especially the combination of uh, remote sensing and, and ground-based uh, ground monitoring uh, as they really uh, complete each other. Um, the enhancements of uh, the forest information system for Europe or Pfizer and a new legislative proposal on EU forest monitoring, uh, reporting, and data collection. Next slide, please. Um, so here, actions are to, to ensure better access to a homogeneous set of forest data. The Commission will put forward this, this new legislative data on EU forest observation, reporting, and data collection. Um, and this will strongly link to, to, to Pfizer, so the Forest Information System for Europe, uh, which will become a so-called one-stop shop for forest information in Europe uh, with uh, open access to data and, and regularly published country reports and, and lay summaries and also more in-depth uh, analysis. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, and so uh, this last part tackles so-called uh, enabling elements to make the strategy and forest policy in the EU in general a success. And this includes uh, a really strong uh, research and innovation agenda in Europe, uh, inclusive and current EU forest governance framework, uh, and stepping up the implementation and enforcements of existing EU acquis. Next slide, please. Um, so here the Commission will be uh, developing a uh, planning our future forest uh, research and innovation agenda together with the member states and, and stakeholders, uh, especially by identifying uh, current research gaps and uh, future priorities for forestry and the forest-based sector, um, but also um, provide, so support the uh, evidence-based design and implementation of uh, forest restoration strategies and also uh, engagement of, um, of society, which will include uh, plant research and uh, innovation mission on soil health for forest soils. 
Next slide, please. Uh, finally, uh, the Commission will also develop a citizen science tool, um, a, sorry, a citizen science uh, program for uh, forest biodiversity, which will include engaging citizens and civil society in monitoring forest biodiversity. And uh, next slide, please. This uh, already brings us to uh, the end of my short introduction. Um, um, yeah, so again, I'm, I'm really delighted to be here and uh, I'm very much looking forward to, to the rest of this webinar. Um, and thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Raphael, for presenting this, I think, really impressive list uh, of activities that are contained in the forest strategy. Raphael will stay throughout uh, the webinar and possibly also uh, colleagues will later join uh, from um, TG Environment as far as we, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some questions already addressed to you. Perhaps we can come back to you later in the discussion. I see. Um, thank you very much. I just want to uh, remind now every one of our participants, we have nearly 200 participants now in the webinar. So this raises quite some interest uh, to really use the questions and answer functions in case you have urgent questions um, um, to the speakers, but also now especially to the panelists. We now move on uh, to our panel. And I would like to start directly with Xavier Lehmanns. I will introduce all the speakers with their introductory statements. Um, we asked uh, our panelists uh, to start with a short two minutes uh, introduction statement, reflecting on three questions. So two minutes, three questions, quite a challenge. Um, does the EU4 strategy um, mean a policy change? That was our first question. Where do they see the incentive or the potential of the strategy for incentivizing forest management and governance for multiple ecosystem services? And thirdly, what is missing, what is good, and what are the key elements? Obviously, having seen the list of activities that the strategy contains, that is really impressive. Um, this is nothing you can deal with in two minutes. So I guess the panelists will be quite uh, selective, but we will have time afterwards to go in more depth and to more broadly discuss. I start with Zabia. Emans Amir is a senior biodiversity policy officer at the WWF European Policy Office. And I asked her about, uh, send me one sentence, what she thought when she first read the European Forest Strategy. And she said, well, the forest strategy is changing the debate on the role of forests in our society. So Amir, can you tell us a bit more in two minutes? Yes, good morning everybody and thank you for the opportunity to participate in this interesting uh, event. I'll try to uh, keep to the two minutes, it's not uh, easy and I hope also my voice will hold because I have a bit of a cold, but I think it's fine. Um, well, our forests are under an immense pressure and people all over Europe are speaking, of, are speaking up about the need to protect and restore them. And that's why um, we were actually appalled by the strong reactions from the forest sector and certain member states when the forest strategy was under discussion, but also after its launch. Um, and so the strategy is for sure changing the debate on the role of forests in our society. Because from my opinion, how can a forest strategy that for the first time puts real emphasis on the need for healthier and more diverse forests uh, can be how can it be considered as unbalanced or not taking into account socio-economic elements because ultimately we all depend on healthy ecosystems for our survival and there is an urgent uh, there is an urgency to to act if we uh, want to uh, tackle climate change and the biodiversity crisis so we need to strictly protect all our remaining old growth and primary forests. We need to adopt ambitious targets for the restoration of forest ecosystems and uh, a much higher target for net removals in the LULUCF sector. And we need to integrate biodiversity conservation as a core principle of sustainable management and make this much more concrete. And the Integrate Network shows that there is plenty of existing know-how and expertise on this across member states, and, and that gives hope, of course. Um, and I think it's very important that we work with the forest owners to ensure that they can get a living 
not only by selling timber, but also for providing the many services that healthy biodiverse forests deliver. And uh, that's why it was also very interesting to hear a bit more about the sincere project that is looking into this. So does this, does this mean that we are happy with everything in the strategy? No. Um, the main problem we see is that um, the strategy is incoherent in relation to climate elements, specifically on the incentivization of the forest bioeconomy, because there are no instruments in the strategy to ensure that this does not result in increased harvesting rates. And I'll stop here then, because I saw the clock. Thank you. Thank you, Zabian. Uh, I used this uh, would make clock uh, to indicate when the time is over. Thank you a lot uh, for your statement. We can come back to some of the points that you said, I'm sure, in the discussion. I would like to move on with uh, introducing Fanny Pom Longwe. Uh, today is my French day in this meeting. Uh, she's the Secretary General of the CEPF, the Confederation of European Private Forest Owners. Uh, as we have heard already, private forest owners um, I represent a big share, the biggest share of European forests. And her sentence uh, or her first thoughts were when she read the strategy is a long sentence, a surprise and strong disappointment. She was surprised to observe a rather simplistic approach as far as forest management is concerned, ignoring the complexity of SFM, forest ecosystem services and ownership, uh, ecosystems and ownership, and strong disappointment to read that forest owner inputs and expectation expressed during the preparatory work had not been given real consideration. So your sentence is already half uh, of the statement time, a smart move, Fanny. Fanny, great that you're here. I look forward to your um, starting statement. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation and opportunity to participate to this uh, highly important and timely discussion. And, uh, hopefully to have the possibility to answer to already some of the remarks uh, made by Sabine because she already expressed some uh, questions about our position. Um, I would like to start saying that the forest owners were among the most uh, uh, supportive of a new EU forest strategy, uh, but the hopes of the forest owners have been dashed when reading the final text, and uh, I can further explain. Um, to answer to the question of the political change, yes, this strategy is a political change because we see that the Commission uh, goes more into, more into dealing with forest management uh, with more details, uh, which is raising question on subsidiarity, but also on the relevance of such action given the diversity of our forests. Um, so the political change is indeed uh, there, but not in the direction that we wished. I'd like to share maybe two um, concerns and maybe further explain uh, forest owners. First, we think that the strategy does not correspond entirely to the reality of the ground. And with that, I mean that the tone is rather simple as forests are in bad shape, what has been done is not good, and we need to fix it with closer to nature forestry. And uh, we think that this ignores the complexity of forest management and the diversity of forests. And it doesn't really recognize the work that has been done uh, by forest owners so far and the successes that have been achieved. Um, and I was happy to hear that um, Sabine mentioned the good examples that are happening, but we don't really see them in the strategy. Um, um, and then the second concern is the unbalanced approach, because uh, yes, um, we, 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 read, uh, we heard from the Commission that the strategy is balanced. It, it, it's not really balanced. There is a focus on biodiversity and carbon sink, and I think we are not the only ones to say that. Um, there is a chapter on bioeconomy, but presented more with risks than opportunities. Um, and in terms of support to forest owners, uh, financial support, yes, uh, there are a lot of provisions and it's, it's very welcome, but we don't see anything related to the productive function of forest as if this was per se negative. Whereas we see it going together with a healthy forest and protection of biodiversity. So we don't understand how biodiversity uh, and resilient forests are kind of disconnected from these economic functions. And that's maybe something we can, um, we can, uh, we can discuss. So yes, to, end, uh, uh, to answer to one of the questions, we don't think that the strategy provides incentive to all ecosystem services because it's not balanced, so it will provide incentive for certain ecosystem services at the expense of others. 
And I hope that during the discussion, we can comment on the, on the actions and on the next steps, because now the strategy is there. And uh, I would be happy to also share some uh, comments on, on the actions proposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fanny, and I've noted this down. Um, we'd be very curious to hear your suggestions also for what to highlight for next action. And thanks also for a clear statement. Um, the next panelist uh, is Meles uh, Zeta um, from Estonia. He's head of the forest department at the Estonian Ministry um, of the Environment. And he also has a very substantial research background. I checked, uh, you have, I, I didn't read, but I checked uh, a lot of the work you have been doing in Meles. And his first thought uh, when he saw the strategy was that he was quite glad to see that many of the activities proposed are similar to the ones um, they have uh, incorporated in Estonian forest development plan currently being prepared by our department. Melis, do you want to uh, tell a bit more about this in the next uh, two minutes? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, George. And uh, your Estonian is as good as your French today, so... <laughs> I need yes. to think about that. <laughs> Uh, thanks for inviting me. Thanks uh, for people to join and and uh, and learn more about the strategy, discuss and think about it. And uh, I thought very clearly about these questions that uh, are the topic of today's uh, presentations and and discussions. And 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 regarding the policy change, you know. Uh, the policy changes in brackets for the reason that there is no forest policy, as it has been uh, it has been agreed, and and there will be no forest policy as far as uh, we know today. But what we see is that through other policies, uh, forestry is uh, is being more regulated. So uh, clearly, many policies affect forestry, especially the ones from this summer. And, and what we can hope is that this uh, uh, subsidiarity that has been very clearly mentioned uh, in, in the strategy and then in discussions, that it will be sufficient and real and, and, and uh, that uh, we uh, can, uh, you know, pro by member states really uh, use our own, uh, own knowledge and, and, and wisdom with our forests so that uh, they can be best managed. And, um, and of course, there is considerable potential for the strategy to incentivize governance and, and, and management for multiple ecosystem services. But, you know, uh, one thing is that if there would be a, a, a um, possibility or, or if it would be easy that there would be already a thriving market for all the ecosystem services, non-wood ecosystem services especially, it is not because we haven't tried before. Now we're going to try even harder, but uh, in many countries you can pick mushrooms, you can walk, there's no restrictions, berries, everything. You can look at the forest and you don't have to pay for it. So it's tricky, uh, but uh, there is now more emphasis on this. And, um, and we have to consider that this administrative burden uh, that uh, is coming is something that we can handle. And, and finally, uh, I, I wouldn't say something is missing, uh, but I would say that uh, what exactly matters is what will be the activities that will be done, because that's where the real things start to happen. Right now, we have only the visions. And, uh, but I, will, I believe that we will have more and healthier forests in the future, for sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Milis. Nice uh, closing words. Um, I think we will move on to our next panelist, uh, Pierre Hermans. Um, a bit more moving towards the forest management level now. Uh, he's the founder and manager of Silver Nova, a Belgium-based international forest uh, consultancy that focuses on forest management, reforestation, and forest landscape restoration. He has some more engagements in the area with uh, FSC. And his first thought on the strategy was, when he read it, um, was that he thought it's a very good overview of best practices it mentions targets for each function of the forests, both, in, both well, it's actually three, uh, environmental, social, and economic. He also thought it's difficult to disagree with, um, but certainly not easy to coordinate on the ground. Pierre, can you specify a bit further? And hopefully we can hear you now because there were some technical issues. Yes, you know, yes. Uh, session. I hope now everything is fine uh, with, the, with the technical issues. Uh, 
many thanks for inviting me for to, be, to this webinar. I'm not a policy specialist. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, it's, yeah. it's very, um, you sound a bit like a robot, uh, at oh. least on my side. I don't know how the others hear you. Can you speak? Can you move a bit? Perhaps it's getting better then. Does it work like this? Perfect. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, what I said is that uh, many thanks for inviting me to this webinar as I'm not a real policy specialist. Uh, I'm a uh, more ground operator focus. Uh, uh, we set up uh, reforestation and uh, forest landscape project uh, uh, everywhere in Europe, uh, especially for reforest action, which is a, a key uh, actor on the reforestation and forest landscape uh, restoration scene. Uh, so I hope I will bring to the table the, the, the concerns of uh, the, the practical operators on the ground, uh, not only forest owners, uh, I know the, the fears on some forest owners regarding this strategy, but also uh, ground operators such as uh, forest harvesters, uh, uh, timber traders and uh, uh, environmental campaigners, all the people that we, have to, that we meet together uh, in our daily work. Then, Regarding the uh, forest strategy, as, I, as, as you say, George, uh, it's, uh, it's for us a, a catalog of good practices and a, a very good overview of uh, virtu uh, virtuous objectives uh, where each function uh, and each actor is addressed. Uh, so uh, I, I'd like to highlight the, 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 the words I hear uh, today, integrate and multifunctional. And uh, for sure, it's, as you said, it's, it's not easy to disagree with a particular chapter, uh, but the problem for us, uh, ground operator, is to put everything together. You know, it's very easy to increase biodiversity uh, if you focus on it. If you, if easy to uh, to uh, produce more timber or best quality timber if you focus on it. The problem we have in our daily management is to put that together and to to get a real multifunctional management. That said, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too pessimistic as I know it, it is possible. Uh, we are working on the FSC chain. Uh, we are working with a ProSilva approach. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I know that it's, it is possible to do it, but it's, it will be very difficult to scale up uh, the, the, the methodology. So that's, that's the, the fear I have. So I'm quite optimistic, but uh, well, to, to scale up on the ground, that will not be easy. Thank you very much, Pierre. Possibly we will come back and ask you what support you at the ground level would really need then to yeah. do this integration effort. Okay. Before that, we uh, leave the EU. Um, we move to Switzerland, very much in the heart of Europe, but not in the EU as we know. And perhaps, Christoph, I introduced you already. You are in a good position um, to share your thoughts on the EU for a strategy on one hand, a bit from an outsider perspective, at the same time, very much as an insider, as the chair of the Integrate Network, and very much involved in the discussions on forest management, forest policy. Christoph, you wrote um, that your first thought was, when you read the strategy, it's a big chance for the EU countries and the European forest and timber sector to address forest-related challenges ahead. And of course, you also wondered how the new EU forest strategy possibly may impact Switzerland as a known EU country. But do you want to um, specify your thoughts? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Georg. Uh, as I said, I was a bit uh, ambiguous in the sense, uh, thinking first, well, uh, Switzerland is not uh, directly involved in the EU policies, therefore I cannot dare to comment on this uh, forest strategy. Uh, I just realized that we have, of course, we have quite similar discussions in our country and also the connections in this triangle of, uh, let's call it climate change, biodiversity, bioeconomy, forest management. I mean, th these discussions are popping up uh, also in our country very much nationally, but also in the, in the international processes. And then the second thought I had also that uh, Switzerland has supported 2017 to 2021 a publication in the frame of uh, Integrate Network. It was uh, 
carried out by the Federal Institute of Forest, Snow and Landscape Research in, in Birmensdorf, VSL, and many others. And the topic was how to balance forestry and biodiversity conservation a view across Europe. And uh, when, when you are reading these uh, 32 cases of successful cooperation all over Europe, I mean, they were studied cooperation on biodiversity conservation, forest management. They were also scientifically analyzed. Uh, so I realized immediately that these results, for example, from this publication could provide really a substantial policy input uh, to the development of the new EU forest strategy. And then since uh, thirdly, as I was the, the chair, or I'm still the, the chair of the integrated network, I realized that the network and the, the, their 19 member states uh, is excellently placed to provide inputs on this multifunctional forest management. And since 18 of these 19 members are from the EU, it was quite clear that it is also relevant to the EU forest strategy. And this is then how we also prepare this policy input uh, in the last, uh, I mean, one year ago. Okay, this was that one. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christoph. And we are really happy that you are in this panel, even though you had some reservations regarding not being an EU country, but perhaps this exactly gives you a bit this inside outside position to put critical questions and to look at the interesting things we have in our debate. Um, I would suggest, uh, first of all, I would like to remind you just to use the question and answer functions to, to put your questions. Don't use the chat because it was impossible then for the moderator to look at both chat and questions and answers. And we will come to your questions in about 20, 25 minutes. But now I would like to first continue a bit our discussion. I would like to start with Sabien. She had the longest time to relax uh, after the introductory statement. Sabien, you highlighted um, that if I correctly understood it from an environmental NGO perspective, there's a lot uh, in the strategy uh, for you. Um, also in your, in your question, in your statement, you formulated that. But you also saw some challenges regarding, um, let's say, policy integration with climate policy. It would be good if you could elaborate shortly on that. And also I was wondering if you now look at this entire big set of measures, which three would you like to highlight in the context of this webinar or which one, where do you plan to engage? Where do you see the biggest opportunities from your side? Um, yeah, that's a, a big question. Um, indeed, um, we have a lot of concerns uh, on the lack of coherence between the forest strategy and uh, climate and energy policies. I'll give two concrete uh, examples. The first one is the Commission's proposal for the Renewable Energy Directive. I think it's uh, very well known that uh, WWF and other NGOs are really not happy with uh, the proposal that is on the table because it will not end incentives for whole trees for energy. And this will increase emissions, uh, damage biodiversity, and is also undermining the principle of cascading use. So this is one example of incoherence. Uh, the other one, um, as I mentioned, is the conflict between the Commission's plans to encourage the use of food for long-lived products, uh, this uh, bioeconomy uh, stimulation, and on the other hand, the need to increase carbon stocks in forests for climate reasons. And we can't do both. And the forest strategy mentions the GRC study. And in that study, the GRC uh, concludes clearly that up to 2050, increasing carbon stocks in forests will deliver the greatest climate benefits because the additional uh, benefits from harvested wood products and material substitution will not be able to compensate for the loss of the forest sink caused by the increased harvesting that this will um, uh, that this will end in. So, so that's why uh, we really think that um, regarding coherence with uh, climate and energy policies, there's still a, a lot of work. Now, where are we going to engage? Um, yeah, there's a lot of actions. Um, as I'm the biodiversity policy officer in uh, uh, WWF, I will uh, 
engage mostly on the strict protection of uh, old growth and primary forests, the uh, nature restoration targets in the upcoming nature restoration law, which will be important for forests as well, and the um, um, the the reflection on how to integrate better conservation uh, of nature into sustainable forest management. Um, but we are also very uh, interested in this uh, legislative proposal on forest monitoring and data collection that will uh, that is uh, announced in the in the strategy. Uh, we think it's good that um, there will be a kind of comparable information from across European forests on issues like climate change, biodiversity, the health of forest, the forest management, the biomass use. So we think this is uh, important and we'll follow it up as well. However, um, we were a bit disappointed that this criteria for sustainable forest management um, that um, in the end were not included in, the, in that legal proposal because um, yeah, if they are used on a voluntary basis, it's our um, uh, experience that uh, with voluntary measures alone, you don't you don't always get a lot of uh, change on the ground that is needed. Thank you. Thank you, Sabia, for highlighting some um, challenges in terms of policy integration, also emphasizing some of the activities you're interested in, and from the integrated network perspective, of course, great that you're interested in biodiversity integration in SFM as well. Funny, I saw you already um, a bit noting or showing, uh, I had the feeling that you want to say something. I will give you very soon the floor. And basically I would like to ask you a bit the same question. Do you also see this uh, policy integration issue? And also I think you have been quite outspoken critical on the main um, orientation of the um, forest strategy. You said that it very much has this proclamizing start and then sort of has closer to nature forestry to resolve um, the issue. I was wondering when you look through the strategy, where do you see the key points um, where you want to engage from a forest designer that you really would like to emphasize also to build bridges, but at the same time, if you could add one activity, what would you add? It's again a long question, sorry for that, but I want to give you the floor also to um, elaborate a bit on that. Thank you, Georg. Uh, maybe uh, one comment about this um of our coherence um, question, if I understand this part of your question. Um, I think it's important to step back uh, uh, because we are discussing today the forest strategy, but uh, I would like to also highlight what's going on in the taxonomy discussion, in the biodiversity strategy discussion, and the RED3 discussion. And in each of these developments, sustainable forest management is addressed and in a different way with a certain level of details, but with absolutely no coherence. So, and with the forest strategy, we have one new layer, new indicators with ranges and thresholds. How will this articulate with biodiversity, taxonomy, RED3? We have no clue. So at some point, uh, I think it's also important uh, to be in the shoes of the forest owners who will be the ultimate to implement all this and to, uh, uh, um, let's say, carry the responsibility. Uh, about the actions which are in the strategy, your questions are where we would like to, where we could engage. Um, and uh, of course, we have the strategy now, so we need to start from there. Although this is, this is again, not corresponding to the hopes uh, of the forest owners. Uh, maybe two points on these actions. Uh, we think that uh, further clarifications is needed uh, on many of these actions, because a lot of these actions, there is a lot. And it's quite, some are still quite vague. So we would really appreciate some clarifications. I can take one example, um, which is the Closer to Nature um, certification scheme, a new EU certification scheme, Closer to Nature. Our questions would be, what will be the added value compared to the schemes that we already have? Do we need that? Uh, who will be in charge? Uh, how would that happen, legally speaking? So all these framework that, that we need uh, to, to engage. And uh, so that's clarifications first. The second is a reality check of certain actions. And I would like to give one example. This is the payment for ecosystem services for forest owners. It's true that the strategy highlights how we should support forest owners and we need to help them. And of course, this is not something 
<laughs> we will criticize. This is something we, we are very much looking forward to discuss. However, when we look at the financial tools, CAP, uh, carbon farming, uh, we do not think that these tools would actually meet the objective. So we see a discrepancy between the nice political attention and the tools which are proposed. And on that, we would also very much uh, welcome a discussion on a reality check on certain uh, actions. So I hope it, it answers to your question, or at least partially, because it was a quite long one. Thank you. Yeah, from now on, I will make them much shorter. Thank you very much, Fanny. I have one uh, quick question. You really nicely highlighted the many demands on SFM, and there are also some ideas now to work on the indicators. Do you see a general necessity to rethink some of the SFM indicators, or do you think SFM is good as it is from a forest owner perspective? I think the answer to this question is that SFM, contrary to what many people think, is not a static concept. It's a dynamic, it's evolving. Forest owners and managers keep uh, thinking on how to adapt. Uh, uh, you all know that there is Forest Europe process with criteria, indicators, definition, and this is not a static process. It's a dynamic concept. Uh, signatories, including the, 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 the EU and the member states, it's important to remind, because the EU is signatory of the, of the Forest Europe process, under which there are ongoing discussions on criteria indicators. And if you look at the, uh, at the, at the work plan currently implemented, this is, part, this is really clearly part of the work. So at some point, it's also a bit, uh, we are a bit puzzled to see that the Commission wants to do its own way with uh, uh, criteria in, uh, ranges and thresholds uh, while being part of Forest Europe doing also that work. So uh, again, uh, uh, it's not static, it's evolving. And um, I think forest owners can prove that, uh, that they haven't been uh, uh, static over the last decades given the, the climate change uh, in, um, uh, challenges that we are facing. Thank you, Fanny, uh, for also highlighting uh, integration demand, not only between EU policies, but also between Forest Europe uh, and EU policies. Um, Miles, I would like to ask you a bit of a question. Um, looking at Estonian forest policy, forest management practices, and looking at the many interesting initiatives that have been introduced and discussed already, where do you see the biggest concrete impact? So where would you expect that there will be an impact on the ground coming from the EU forest strategy? Or is it too early to say? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, you know, Estonian forest policy is, is quite directly driven by our forestry development plan, which we are putting together right now. And that is what will determine what we will do uh, with the policy and, and other measures during the next 10 years with long term goals in mind. And, and this is... Um, uh, is currently, yeah, uh, it's actually in my department after this meeting, we will uh, have a big uh, workshop on, on, on the details. And, and so we are happy that the EU4 strategy is there. Uh, like uh, you mentioned, I was happy to see that it, you know, it's uh, riding the same wave in many ways. And, uh, and so now we will look more closely what we could uh, take more directly from the EU for a strategy to our development plan. And, and, and because I, you know, I think many things we do, but if it's not written clearly and using the same words, then it uh, it can be uh, lost in translation. And and the other thing is that you know they, I mean, there's sixty around sixty the Commission will statements there in in the uh, forest uh, strategy and and uh, you know we we look at the ones with deadlines, with the early deadlines first, of course, because these will be the ones that uh, will be decided very soon. And so, of course, uh, primary and old growth forest, we are involved. This uh, will probably not change forest policy in Estonia, but will have an impact uh, or might have an impact. And we want to have our say, of course, and, and I would uh, you know, if I'm thinking right now for for the direct inputs, then there can be several, but really what I guess my big message is that, uh, you know, from a strategy, what grows out is, is different, N not necessarily 
all things will be equally uh, emphasized. So we need to see the first things and then then uh, then really focus on those. And uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we. We, we, we believe there's uh, great uh, things to do together with Europe as long as you know they consider that we know our forest best and that uh, we have many uh, a, a lot of forest uh, for area and that we have too many old forests for a sustainable growth perspective uh, so it's just important that that can be considered all the time. Thank you Miele. so quite some work ahead uh, for you. Uh, or probably also a uh, work you already did partly in the past to look deeper into that. Uh, Pierre, I was wondering, you highlighted quite nicely this um, challenge also with integrating multiple demands and that you liked what is in the strategy, but that you were also asking, so how to deal with this practically? And I think Fanny has indicated already from a forest owner perspective, some of the integration challenges and has also spent, have also highlighted that well, this is something to discuss. Um, what there is or not might be regarding funding of uh, forestry for multiple ecosystem service. I was wondering if you know a look a bit from a forest management perspective, what kind of key support do you need for integrated forest management approaches? Should we talk about money? Should we talk about um, law? Should we talk about knowledge? Can you give us some insights and what have you seen in the strategy? Yeah, uh, regarding uh, ecosystem services and uh, and the funding of uh, of it, uh, it's something we are talking about for a long time. And most of uh, of the owners we are w working with uh, are aware of something is happening in in on that issues, but it's uh, it's it's not clear. Uh, we we don't have really a methodology to to quantify to to analyze the the, the quality of the service. Uh, uh, that that we 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 bring, uh, we don't we don't even have a, a price. We don't know exactly what's what's the cost. This is a, a, a real problem for us, uh, you know, uh, to 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 know what's the cost. So with FSC, we have uh, we have started uh, now uh, uh, the certification of forest ecosystem services, uh, but. Uh, it's, it's only a kind of uh, pilot project. And even if I'm involved in FSC, to be honest, I don't know exactly uh, how to do and, uh, and how to, uh, to, to, to scale up the methodology. Uh, maybe something about the, the, the funding from, uh, uh, from private uh, potential funder. Uh, as I said, I, I'm working a lot with reforestation and we, uh, we get support from the uh, corporate sector, for the private sector. Uh, to, to, to plant trees and to restore forests, you, you know what I mean, to offset CO2, etc., etc. And uh, uh, we realized that uh, seven years ago, we have started the, that job only in planting trees because uh, the, the private sector want to do something, but they don't know anything about the forest. And the most, uh, the most, the, the thing that is easily understandable for them is planting trees. Uh, we take them by the end, we explain our job, now we can easily uh, find money to uh, restore uh, forests by uh, uh, regenerating, uh, by using uh, natural re regeneration, regeneration, for example, or, or to, to, to more uh, ecosystem restor restoration. It's possible to explain them and they, 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 they accept to, 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 to support uh, us for, for that. And I think that uh, uh, ecosystem services is the next step. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure they are open to do something, but for that, we need a, a methodolog methodology. We, we need something that is uh, credible, that's something that we can rely on to, to explain exactly uh, what's, the, what's, what's the sense of what we are doing. And, and, and that's, that's the point. Uh, from the uh, forest owner's point of view, they understand that there's something maybe to, to, to get money. They understand that maybe uh, money from from only timber production, uh, it's 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 going to change, and they welcome uh, other other input. But uh, it's it's not clear. The, it's really a problem of methodology, how to quantify, how to organize our, our work, and uh, this is the this is the point. Thank you, Pierre. Um, well, I think there is quite some work on on this issue in in the forest related sciences. 
Um, and also in the Sincere project that we are coordinating, we are trying to work a bit with examples. So for instance, in Belgium, there is a, an idea to, to work with reverse auctioning where private landowners can bid for certain measures related to biodiversity. I think there is upcoming experience. It's also a bit um, the question of how to then practically implement it. And well, I think from Funny, we heard that there's quite some text on it, but some doubts how much it will really connect, if I understood you correctly, Funny, to the big, uh, the big money in the cap, uh, if I can make it short. Um, I think there are also questions on that, quite many in the chat. Um, and I would suggest we soon uh, open with the questions of the participants. But before that, I have a last question to Christoph. Um, and it's actually a bit of a double question. I'm very good in, in asking long questions today. And one is, um, now listening to the discussion, where do you see the role of the network integrate? And the second question is, you highlighted already in your statement that there's a lot of similarity to, this, to the Swiss discussion. Now, from what you have heard, where could we learn in the EU from Switzerland? Or where not? So integrate network, Switzerland, or reverse order, as you like. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Georg, for these questions. I mean, integrate network, I have already uh, appointed, uh, I mean, I have pointed to that in my presentation. I see this is, a, uh, it, it has the advantage to be a kind of informal uh, network in the sense that uh, the members, they can also uh, develop a bit positions which are not always just covering 100% the country position. I, this is what I learned. I mean, there is some room to give some inputs and I see this network perfectly placed also in this uh, link between biodiversity conservation and forest management and bioeconomy. So I think a lot of progress can be done there. And uh, you have seen, we have a lot of events on that and this should, by all means, it should continue. I, I would really encourage all the countries to be uh, active in this uh, respect. Maybe a few points uh, from my experience in, in Switzerland, like, um, these criteria and indicators for sustainable forest management. I mean, this is something which is also ongoing discussion since many years. Um, I would see, for example, in Switzerland, we have similar discussions between at national level and with the cantons. So if, uh, if at national level, we would come with a new concept, which is called the closer to nature, approach or something. I think the cantons would be very reluctant actually to accept something like this because they say close to nature, we know what it is. And as it has been said by other members of the panel, uh, I mean, it is a dynamic concept. I mean, some issues are clear, it, it, it leads to sustainability, but how to lead to that? I mean, we have to adapt uh, address uh, new challenges like climate change and new demands from the society like recreation and, and biodiversity and so on. So it is a dynamic concept and as Switzerland we, we are feeling of course more comfortable when these criteria of indicators are developed in, in Forest Europe where we are a full member out of these 46 uh, countries. Uh, <clears throat> instead of having uh, something developed uh, just in the EU, this would be then a bit more difficult to, to uh, convince our cantons on that. Um, on the forest information system, FISE, we are also very actively participating in that, uh, Switzerland. We, we see some advantage that uh, this um, uh, information system is also addressing uh, in the triangle, as I said before, climate change, biodiversity, bioeconomy. I think this makes really sense that this is uh, a, a bit harmonized and it should just not lead to additional burden for monitoring as it was, it is mentioned there by, by other members also in the AEA. 
And the last point, maybe payment of ecosystem services. I mean, Switzerland is in a situation where we have 50% of our forests uh, have a protective function, uh, protective in the sense against uh, avalanches, erosion, and so on. So there is at least this um, ecosystem service, this is really intensively addressed. There is also financial compensation for that. Uh, the second one is also biodiversity. There we have a lot of mechanism of supporting the forest owners to do something on uh, biodiversity. But the remaining ecosystem services like, for example, recreation or uh, uh, also even the, the, the climate change addressing uh, mitigation, there we also we have still a lot in front of us to do. Uh, on compensating these ecosystem services or have a developing a, um, a mechanism of, of payment. This is what I can say for the moment from Switzerland. Thank you very much, Christoph, for sharing um, some, some interesting insights. Um, while you were still speaking, I was a bit uh, checking the questions in, uh, in the chat. And I can say we have many, many questions. And I also realized that obviously uh, the commission is very attractive as a target for questions. So what I would now suggest is that we start with, uh, I see Marco Lida has also joined, uh, with Rafael and Marco, with some of the questions that are a bit similar from the um, participants to you. And then uh, we open also up for comments by the other panelists to get us a bit into a discussion. So there's a big group of questions, I would say, asked, uh, for instance, uh, on the funding issue. So one is, for instance, does the EU wish to promote forest-related remuneration schemes what can we expect there more precisely? And in line with that, there's a question, what would promoting ecosystem services payment scheme exactly mean? Will this be mandatory in the cap? Um, what is about the strategic plans? And finally, there's a question about what is concretely the plans for carbon farming and forestry? What is about financial remuneration? So this issue seems to be important for many. It has been also highlighted by some of the panelists. Can you comment? a bit on the plans there. What can we expect? And I don't know if it's Rafael or Marco who wants to comment on that. Good morning, Georg. I, I can take some of the questions. Um, I actually don't have access to the chat because I only connected, uh, I could only connect uh, very late, but uh, Rafael sent me the questions by mail. Uh, so I try uh, to give some replies, uh, uh, hoping that I, I got all the relevant questions. Then I will ask Rafael, uh, uh, to come in uh, to complement uh, as needed. Well, first of all, uh, good morning, everybody, and I apologize that I had uh, an impediment. I uh, wasn't able to connect before. Uh, so, um, uh, what would promote? Uh, uh, so, the question on the on the cap uh, schemes uh, would it be mandatory part of cap strategic plan uh, plans, uh, or the initiative will remain larger with member states? Well. Um, we are not uh, CAP uh, experts, but um, you know certainly that uh, under the new CAP, the member states have a large room for maneuver, um, more than under the, 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 the past CAP. So uh, it cannot be mandatory for the Commission um, uh, to put elements uh, we can recommend that they are used in the CAP strategic plans. And uh, we are promoting as a number of other um, uh, initiatives and tools, for instance, uh, as it is written in the strategy, a preparatory action uh, and the life to develop a payment for ecosystem services. Uh, then uh, there was a question from Zoltan Kuhn on, uh, on uh, whether we consider the three most criticized elements where implementation seems to be most challenging. I, uh, I think we have no answer to that in the sense that uh, I don't know what the three uh, most criticized elements are because uh, depending on who you talk to, you have uh, completely different views uh, on the different part of the strategies and the part which is criticized by a sector uh, is praised by another sector. Uh, so I, I, I think that uh, um, as it is written in the strategy, we count really on member states and all stakeholders to be fully on board to secure a smooth implementation. But uh, I think the challenges um, are, are everywhere as usual uh, when you deal with, um, with environmental legislation. Uh, then uh, there was a question uh, for the commission by Matteo um, on the certification. 
Well, uh, as you know, there is uh, at the moment there is no certification for prosthetic forestry. That at the moment doesn't exist. Uh, so we are working on guidelines for um, prosthetic forestry. They are due in 2022, second uh, second trimester. Uh, obviously, we will consider all possibilities to make synergies with the existing schemes. This is certainly not uh, not excluded, and uh, we will build on, on what exists. Uh, but at the moment, uh, there is no harmonized certification in the EU. The schemes uh, rely very much on, on national criteria. Uh, there is no something like sometimes uh, the parallelism is made with the um, the, the bio certification for agricultural products. Uh, okay, this is a regulation, but uh, but that is something that brought uh, a harmonized system that uh, uh, at the moment we don't have. The, the, this should be seen positively. We want to reward uh, by labeling, uh, by certifying those who do uh, forestry uh, more close to nature for the purpose of biodiversity and so on. And then uh, there was a question uh, to Rafael, uh, uh, that uh, you can try to take as well. Uh, um, uh, while the new forest uh, strategy by Piero Papp will promote uh, greater forest management within the EU, to what extent can the forest strategy promote sustainable forest management outside the EU? Well, one of the declared objectives of the EU is also to lead by example. So it's, it is clear and then uh, it's, it was very good. We were at absolutely in line with the external service, um, the EAS uh, of the European Union on the forest strategy, because they also see in the forest strategy a way to kind of uh, set, uh, set the example uh, for other countries. So improving forest management and protection should be inspiring. Of course, we cannot um, impose our system on, uh, abroad. But uh, as you know, the EU is also, the Commission is also working on uh, legislation on deforestation free import of goods. I cannot say anything because this is still uh, still in the pipeline. There is no, no draft yet, but uh, this would also be an important element uh, for influencing uh, forest protection uh, and, uh, and management outside the EU. I think, uh, I don't know, Rafael, if you want to complement, this is what I identified that could be, could be placed, uh, replied by the commission. Yeah, uh, thanks, Marco. Uh, yeah, you already said a lot. Um, just to, to give some some information on, on for example questions on, on carbon farming and remuneration so so the commission will also adopt uh, the carbon farming initiative which was announced in the farm to fork strategy to uh, to promote um well as, as it says in, in the forest strategy business models that reward climate environment friendly practices by land managers that are based on on the climate benefits that they provide um and, and their uh, completely support can and, and financing can be uh, either public or private and uh, public support in the form of uh, pure national financing um, under the state aid guidelines. Um, the Commission is also exploring how to facilitate the use of, of national funds for forestry measures and, um, and to target them for ecosystem services. Um, and, uh, and, and private initiatives um, could finance carbon farming schemes through the generation of carbon certificates um, that can be traded in markets. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as, Mar as Mark said, the development of, of capital cheap plans still lies in great part in the hands of uh, member states where they have a lot of room for maneuver. Um, although um, payments for ecosystem services will, of course, be encouraged. Uh, just some, so, so some general comments to, to um, things that were mentioned in, in the panel discussions. Uh, so, um, we, we disagree with some of the reactions to the strategy as. Um, the uh, diversity of forests, uh, for example, was very much taken into account, and, uh, and this is um, a new wide strategy of forest diversity will especially uh, be addressed in, in its implementation. And, uh, and we, we've received thousands of contributions, many of them from foresters, and, and many initiatives that are stemming from a strategy uh, are actually being developed in close cooperation with other states and, and, and people, uh, people on the ground. So. Uh, uh, but of course, we, we need to focus on, on people on the ground and, and, and how we can translate the strategy to, to be actional and, um, and again, collaborate as much as possible with forest managers and owners in, in the strategy's implementation. Um, to, to some questions on, on increasing harvesting. Um, so it was mentioned by, by Sabian, uh, increasing carving stocks from forest protection alone will not be enough to cover increases in harvesting and um, and a shift to long-term with products uh, instead of 
for example, uh, bioenergy and, and an increase in efficiency in the use of wood products, uh, increase in energy efficiency in general and, and rise of other renewable energy sources can, can also lessen the need for, for increased harvests. Um, but, but especially, and again, new forest management techniques such as close edge nature forestry can help reconciling uh, production uh, and, and conservation goals. Um, I, I see there was a question on the... Uh, uh, Raphael, I think we stop here because uh, you did a great job really in answering my questions, but also answering all the other questions that are there for the Commission. And obviously, I mean, as we can see the question and answers, there are many, but this might be too many also for the participants. And I would, if you agree, I would like to interrupt you here um, because I would like to hear from the other panelists and I would like to start with Fanny and then Melis, um, a quick assessment on their side. Before I do this, um, Piotr Borkowski has a question also. Just get ready, Piotr, to be live to ask your question. But first, funny, I mean, we heard a lot um, about interesting, really interesting elements about working towards um, funding for um, forestry for multiple ecosystem service, but you have been a bit critical. So what is your concrete expectation? So what do you think, really looking at all these ideas, what would you like to highlight what needs to be done from your perspective? And then, Minas, I will ask you from a Estonian perspective, um, we heard about the implementation of the strategy. What is your expectation also or what should not happen? Fanny, first, please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yes, I was critical when I mentioned the reality check compared to the expectations, compared to the tools. And I'd like to comment maybe two of these tools which are in the forest strategy, the CAP uh, and the, um, and the, and the uh, carbon farming. <clears throat> About the CAP, um, well, we heard from the Commission that uh, the Commission cannot impose anything, and it was good to hear. Um, uh, there is more flexibility given to Member States, and there is only now one plan, one strategic plan. So not anymore two separate plans, rural development and, and direct payments. So uh, I am wondering um, how, what will be the importance of forest-related measures in these plans, knowing that the, 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 the cake uh, uh, size is now decreasing and that there will be a lot of actors willing to be a, a, a share of the cake. So we cannot expect, and of course we will support and we are trying to, to push for that, but we should not expect that the cap uh, will be the uh, silver bullet to pay these ecosystem services. We don't see it happening. Second, carbon farming. Uh, good to hear, and good to hear as well, uh, confirmed by, by Mr. Lelouvier, uh, and good to read in the reports. Um, so far, as far as I know, uh, uh, at least from CPF side, we haven't been invited to uh, 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 recent workshops on that aspect. And uh, even one of these workshops, we, we, we applied to be a member and our participation was uh, declined. And when you read the, the latest reports on that aspect, the, the role of forestry is uh, almost uh, nowhere. So we are wondering how this carbon farming will actually concern the forest sector. So uh, it's good to hear that it, it's a tool, but we haven't seen anything in that direction. Um, Maybe if I can just uh, comment on, on two things that I have heard, because I have the floor, if you allow me, um, about these certification schemes um, uh, closer to nature. Good to hear that there will be synergies with the existing schemes, because, uh, and that this will be studied by the Commission. Because when we read the strategy, this is, this is absolutely not visible. We see a new EU uh, scheme that will be developed, we don't read, uh, first of all, we will look at possible synergies with existing schemes, so excellent to hear. Um, and second, about the uh, bioeconomy and increase of harvesting, uh, I think it's in one of the comments of the, of the, of the chat on the Q&A, um, uh, since the 50s, since 1950, carbon stored in forests has been, has doubled. Meanwhile, we have developed a woodworking industry. So it's not that uh, it's either or. We, the EU forest management has proven that we can increase carbon in forests while developing an industry in the use of wood products. So I am also uh, wondering and questioning why there are so many uh, criticisms and worries uh, about this wood in construction or the use of wood for bioeconomy. I think we need to also look at the facts uh, and, 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 and be proud of what has been done in EU forest over the last decade. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny, uh, for some clear uh, statements and responses. Melis, um, I wanted to ask you about, obviously, I mean, looking at uh, how EU 
Policies are working, the member states are crucially important in implementing specifically strategies. Um, what do you expect and where are you looking forward to uh, in this implementation process? So what, where do you would like to call Marco or Rafaela, where do you want to, how do you see this from your perspective and what do you expect not to happen? Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I think, uh, I, I don't know if I would say fear or greatest fear, but perhaps it is true is that we are not listened to and, and our, our knowledge and ideas and opinions uh, disappear somewhere and, and we feel like we have been left behind in a way that you know, or the big system for a small country, just we are, you know, can't really actually, uh, you know, f get a best result for us, what we believe. Of course, we understand that compromises need to be made. And, and, and what I would say also is that, uh, uh, you know, trust uh, between, uh, uh, between all the parties, stakeholders, member states, uh, EU, uh, is of course important, but what I feel uh, at looking at this uh, legislative ideas is that this, there is this trust is not really there from the EU side. They they look at the member states and they feel like, well, you know what, we cannot really trust them. Like we heard today, that if there is no law, there is no result. I don't know. I'm not sure that's uh, always true, and that uh, the trust is, it's hard to build it when, as we know, pre. Previously, what member states have said for the preparation of the strategy, it's not many that feel that has been considered significantly. And so for the future, uh, we just want, you know, this subsidiarity to be real. And we want that our, you know, we in Estonia with 100 years went from 20 to 50 percent of forest. We have, we are in top of nature conservation in Europe, and that has to be considered that we've done already so much for what we can do extra is limited compared to many countries. So they, it's not reasonable to demand from us what you can demand from some other country. And, and mainly, I would say it's important to consider that countries and their forests are, are different. And you know, it's very hard to do a Europe wide uh, a thing that will be. So that, that's hard, and so it just needs to be considered, and um, and then uh, then when we are listened to and considered, then everything should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it seems, uh, from my perspective, that a lot of uh, talks are needed and will uh, likely happen on implementing the forest strategy. Before I finally give the floor to Piotr, last question quickly to Zabian from an NGO perspective: Do you trust the countries and the forest owners? And of course, you can give a nice answer, but basically, what do you think is needed to, do you see the trust basis and how do you see this from your perspective? How do you like to want to engage um, with the forest side, so to say? Um, I find this a bit a strange question, to be honest, because it's not a question of, of trust. It's a question of, um, I mean, trust is important, but I mean, th that's not the problem. Um, we we, we uh, do our work um, with our with as main focus, how can we um, increase the resilience of our forests so that they can provide us with all those services, including timber, also in the future. And we see that, um, um, the health of forests is deteriorating. Uh, that's clearly uh, brought forward in the MICE reporting. And uh, we see that forests are becoming more and more vulnerable to all kinds of uh, climate change uh, impacts, for instance. So on the other hand, it's very clear that if we increase the diversity, uh, the structural diversity, etc., in forests, that the resilience of the forest is increasing. And that's what we want to achieve. Now, um, to, to reply a bit on the trust, I think for me, it's very telling that, uh, as I said in the beginning, from the, for the first time, in our view, the forest strategy is more because that we have had forest strategies previously. Yeah? This is not a new, a new issue, but for the first time, there is 
uh, more considerations for these biodiversity aspects and all of a sudden everybody is in turmoil and that's what makes me wondering because if you are um, certain about multifunctional forest management etc it should include taking care also of biodiversity it shouldn't be a problem and that's what i was trying to say uh, in the beginning that um, um, it's important now to to work together and, and to start on the implementation of the of the good stuff that is in the forest strategy and we hope that everybody including all the member states will uh, will support the strategy because it's important thank you thank you Serbia. and sorry about putting the trust uh, issue on on you but thanks for a good answer i think uh, a lot of uh, conversations are needed and a lot of um um, well, uh, looking into indeed what is there uh, is also needed. I would like to finally give Piotr Okowski the floor because he's waiting since quite some time. I think he has a question, if I understood correctly, my colleagues, for all of the panelists. So we probably spend the rest of the meeting with answering to your question, Piotr. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Georg, and then good afternoon to everyone. Uh, yes, uh, I wanted actually to, to ask a question about like beginning of planning of certain policy objectives. Some of these policy objectives we have, we can see envisaged in the, in the forest strategy, or although to our belief in Eustafor, the, the strategy rather translates some objectives from other policy sectors than sets its own for comprehensive uh, objectives for, for the forest-based sector or entire, uh, entire forest value chain. But anyway, my question would be whether policy planning and setting of these objectives should not be based on a kind of serious uh, stock-taking exercise. What's currently uh, at stake? I mean, what the field data provides us about the condition and the situation with European forest or EU forest, if, you, if we want to narrow it down. Because uh, to some extent, uh, we have the uh, the impression that there are like different systems of collecting information and uh, these systems are not necessarily going or building up the, 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 the same picture. Uh, Sabine just mentioned MICE, of course it's one of the, one of the systems, uh, state of uh, EU nature produced in Copenhagen is another one. But we have also national forest inventories uh, in the member states, we have forest management planning, which covers 100% of, of, of uh, state ownership in forests, which is uh, one third of the EU uh, forest land use. And then the data we can derive from there uh, provide uh, some different uh, pictures. And this is confirmed by international reporting, either by Forest Europe or FAO, for example. So my question would be whether the stock taking has, has been taking place before the objectives has been set. And the, the second question is, since we see the discrepancy uh, confirmed to some extent by intervention from Melis and from Sabien, we can see this discrepancy also what, what's being taken from the national level, how to find the solution to avoid this in the future that we are talking about two different situations. Of course, I don't want to deny that there, there are certain issues going on in, 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 in a forest uh, which are caused by the climate change, for example. But to restore from the damage due to calamities caused by climate change, silviculture or forest management has its own tools, and then these tools are nothing new. Of course, we need permanent advice from the research and science because the, the situation is dynamic, so we have to mod modify the, 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 the management practice. However, we apparently don't need a revolution uh, and uh, when we see at the strategy and what is announced there, it's a certain revolution to be imposed from the top down without taking the due um, account what's going at the, uh, at, the, at the field level. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Potia. Just summarizing, I think your question is um, for the strategy uh, as a revolution, what kind of stock taking, what kind of assessment has been done? I think this is a question to the commission, I would think. And then secondly, um, this discrepancy in, in forest monitoring results and different findings of different schemes. So what is the vision on that? There's a lot in the strategy as well. 
I, I guess we first ask our commission participants to, to respond. And then, of course, we open up for other panelists that might to also uh, contribute to that. Marco, Rafael, who wants to go first on what kind of assessment has been done and what is there on, on, on better forest information? Rafael, you want to take that on forest information? You muted them. Sorry, Marco? No, I was asking if Rafael wants to take the one on information. Um, yeah, so as so, 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 no, we're, we're currently working on, on, on really strengthening the uh, force information system for Europe Pfizer. Um, and so um, assessments will still be, uh, will, will still be bad, but uh, we're currently um, working a lot with the Rafael, you are muted. I don't know who's muting you. It's not me. Hmm. Can someone help uh, Rafael to unmute? Hmm. There's obviously um, an issue with, <laughs> I don't know if this is one of the other panelists uh, always muting you. Uh, Marco, do you want to take it then first? And we hope that this technical thing can be resolved on Raphael's side. Okay, do you hear me? Yes. So uh, if I understand well, so the question is uh, what what uh, assessment and consultation is being done in view of the, of the monitoring uh, initiative? Yeah, I think the question was two, two things. First, what kind of assessment have you based the strategy on? Um, and secondly, what are your plans to improve, um, basically to improve data because it seems that they're inconsistent. I mean, obviously they're inconsistent findings of different forest monitoring schemes. I think this were how I understood Piotr's question. I think that, that uh, I could be very, there is a commission staff yeah. working document accompanying the strategy that uh, contains exactly the reply to this question. So please uh, have a look at this staff working document. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Rafael, are you meanwhile there again, or are you? Yeah, does does it work now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, as Mark said, this is a staff working document, um, but we're also closely working with the JSC, and uh, of course we have lots of different. Uh, uh, data and dis discrepancies, but this is uh, actually worked on also uh, with the EEA and uh, we know that uh, well, we have large gaps between all these types of data, but this is also why we're, we're working towards this uh, sort of homogeneous data set uh, and, and also with the um, uh, legislative proposal for, um, for, for, for observation. Um, and, and the idea is to to, to have this uh, this this better um, on, on, on homogeneous data set for for all of Europe uh, for forests. So I hope this answers the question in a way. Thank you. Yes, and I see Christoph, and I saw also perhaps Fanny. Yeah, Christoph and Fanny, do you want to comment on that? Yes, I, I think it is a very interesting topic. Um, in, I mean, from the discussions we have in Switzerland, uh, sometimes I realize it is not the lack of data, actually, what, what we are missing. It is rather than the discussion and the analysis on this data. And, and I mean, sometimes there are really different worlds. I mean, if if you have the data, for example, I give you an example on uh, dead wood in Switzerland, and then some say some there is a group saying, well, this is not sufficient. We need a double and three times, and the others say, well, if you look to the last twenty years, it had it has increased already three times, and then. If you try to understand, uh, then maybe you are coming to a, a bit more differentiated uh, view and saying, well, in average, there is really sufficient, but there are some regions that are not sufficient. And then if you can agree on that, I mean, then it gives really, uh, it helps also to understand each other. It is not a question of trust, but it's a, really a question how how you interpret the data. And, and in my view, this FISA, should actually give then 
the opportunity also to have sufficient data, but also to analyze it in, in a balanced way. This will be then the, the challenge, for example. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. And then Fanny? Yes, thank you. One short comment on this uh, fact-based uh, uh, question uh, about this staff working document uh, that was uh, just mentioned. Uh, we have, of course, read it with uh, great uh, attention. Uh, it, it mostly consists uh, in EU institution reports, which are, of course, very valuable. Uh, we do think that uh, uh, we still lack a comprehensive peer-reviewed science reports in this report, in this document that could have been much more complete to balance uh, the picture of, of, of forests. We also miss in this report what was mentioned by, uh, by Piotr, the, um, the, the situation in the member states as described by the member states based on their ground data with national forest inventories. So uh, when we look at this report, uh, uh, we think that this could have been much more complete and, and again, much more balanced. Uh, and then this, rela this relates to maybe one comment on the future legislation on monitoring and reporting, uh, because it's a bit in line with, 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 with this question. Uh, we, of course, do believe that this legislation will, it says in the strategy that they will rely on remote sensing. Uh, uh, it also mentions ground data, but we do really hope that uh, this ground data will be fully part of the discussion uh, based on the previous experience of Forest Focus, which was a, a good EU experience. So um, I think this data from the ground uh, needs and deserve a high attention. Uh, and I also very much agree with the previous comments about also how the data are interpreted and uh, uh, and and try to um, avoid some shortcuts and and, and 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 try to have like good discussions on what the data actually mean. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so funny. I think if you take all the statements together, we can be hopeful that then for the next uh, EU forest strategy in five years, I don't know when, 10 years, four years, there's a total agreement on the situation of the European forest and, and everyone has clear and similarly interpreted information. Um, before we come to our closing interventions, I would like to give every panelist the, the opportunity, really one sentence. What is the key take home message you have now from this discussion? I mean, we have a lot of topics and looking at the questions, there are many more topics we could discuss for hours. But now thinking about the EU forest strategy, what is this one key lesson learned that you will also use in your next activity on the strategy. Is there something that you will do afterwards? Call someone, say, this is really new. And I would like to start with uh, Pierre. What is your key sentence? What have you learned? <sighs> well, I don't. Uh, yeah, uh, let's say I, I'm still, I'm still asking the same question. Uh, not sure that I have the answer today. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is uh, how to how to scale up uh, the, the the sustainable management. We we are trying to do that uh, every every day, and we realize that uh, it's it's really very difficult to to to, to scale up. We are uh, a lot of countries with a lot of uh, different forests, with a lot of different state of mind uh, in forest owners and other actors. So, really, I I I go back to the the the, the first words I mentioned at the. The beginning of the the webinar it's integrate and multifunctional and uh, i think that we are we really have to focus on it and it's a big challenge thank you pierre and too bad it, but also to be expected perhaps that we couldn't fully resolve this mega task uh Miles, what is your one sentence take home message from here <laughs> uh, i'm gonna use a lot of commas in my sentence then but uh but I will, um, I will comment on the balance. Uh, I, I think, you know, um, they, we hear about the strategy discussions. Uh, we hear this balance always coming up and, uh, and, um, and some say it's very balanced, uh, the, the, the author specifically, and some say it should go that way. And some say it should go another way more strongly. And, uh, uh, and and that is the reality of of today we we have the same problems with many developments in the society and uh, uh, and what we should do is really to uh, 
come to the level where everybody can say, yeah, okay, no, that's actually really fine. I, I probably not possible, but th that should be something we do I in the countries. We have uh, different issues related to this, but um, but yeah, so let's just try to be all very constructive. Thank you, Melis. Indeed, a long uh, sentence. Funny. What is your take home message? Your long sentence. Thank you. That's not an easy question. Well, what I take home is that uh, we are talking about something which is uh, complex, where obviously there are uh, very divergent views um, uh, expressed. Now the strategy is published, so it will be implemented. So what I also take from this uh, meeting is uh, some uh, indications or caveats or warnings uh, on how the implementation should go. Uh, try to understand each other and uh, and um, and hopefully I, I, I was clear enough to 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 put again the, the position of those who will be the ultimate responsible. So what I take is complexity, uh, dialogue needs to continue and um, some uh, very important framework and caveats for the implementation. Thank you very much, Sabia. Sabine? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I was having problems to unmute myself. Um, maybe two very quick uh, take home messages for me. Uh, first of all, I think, uh, and I also saw this in the in the chat questions that the li complex linkages between nature conservation, climate stock, climate sink, uh, and all this is not well understood and we should um, yeah, I would have liked to have more time to discuss about this. Uh, but the second one, uh, as Fanny says, the strategy is here now. Let's all uh, get behind it and uh, implement. And um, I think in, in the previous, in the past, we have been discussing too much in silos. So I wanted to say that I'm also very happy with the new governance structure that is mentioned in the strategy. Because I think, like the discussion of today has shown, it's good that different views are, are taken into account and this new governance structure is also going to help, I think, to discuss more together and taking all the considerations into account. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. And please feel all invited to respond to questions in the chat that we couldn't take up now via written statements. Christoph. Uh, thank you, Georg. Uh, I mean, many things uh, have been confirmed in the sense that I realized that uh, also in the EU, together with the member states, we have a similar discussion. In Switzerland, we can... Uh, what, what I'm taking home is, I think, uh, what also has been said, uh, it is important to listen to, to uh, other views, what I would also add is what, I mean, maybe this can be done in a smaller country, but uh, what is also very helpful sometimes is to go to these demonstration plots and discuss uh, really actual uh, issues from different sides. It's, it's sometimes it's much easier if you, if you are, if you have the opportunity to be in the forest, to make an excursion, and then uh, you, you discuss also with the, with the forest owners, what they have in mind and so on. So you have the, the, the whole different levels of science, of policy and, and of practitioners you have at the same time. So, um, I mean, finally, I'm just, um, confirmed that the Integrate Network uh, is, is very well placed to provide a platform on discussions like that. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. And indeed, I mean, a webinar setting is not uh, the in the forest discussion setting. Um, Marco, Raphael, do we want to have also a quick comment? What have you learned? Um, you're probably the most, <laughs> most, uh, how to say, the most responsible ones for taking also the next steps on the implementation. What is your one sentence? Uh, very quickly, for me, what is very uh, what was illuminating in this uh, experience is that forests are not different from other sectors, where you break up a silo, like uh, Sabian said, and then uh, uh, you create, of course, a lot of a lot of reactions in different senses. 
Um, what I, I, I like to underline is that uh, it's very interesting when people say there was a, like not sufficient consultation on some because we, the consultation was enormous. But of course, you consult, you cannot always take into account uh, what people say because then the commission decides differently. It doesn't mean you haven't consulted. You, uh, you, you consult and then you decide differently because this is, this is the beauty of politics. Uh, uh, somebody said uh, high up in the commission, forests are the new cars. Uh, because the level of controversy and the importance of forests, and this is also what we have learned, the, the forests have, have grown up in importance for people, for society, for politics in general. And this is clearly reflected in the process. So my, my uh, uh, takeaway lesson is uh, forests are not different from uh, other sectors like cars, where there are controversies, where there are environmental issues which are important for society. We have to be aware of that. We shouldn't say we haven't been consulting. We just say we have been uh, consulting and then we have taken a decision and the decision is on the table. I don't know if Rafael, you want to add something? Okay, thank you, Marco, for a clear closing statement from your side, the beauty of politics. We will have now the beauty of two uh, final interventions, uh, one by Chantal von Ham, the Acting Director of the European Regional Office of ICN, the other one by Marc Palai, Director of IFI. Marc, I know you have another appointment, and I talked already to Chantal before this meeting, assuming that it might become close to one. Do you want to go first? Chantal would be happy with it, or do you still have a bit more time than we keep the order as we wanted to have it? I have more time, so Chantal can start if you wish. Great, then I think we start as planned. Thank you, Chantal. Uh, I already introduced you, the acting director of the European Regional Office of ICN, and also one of the key persons um, behind this webinar and in the Sincere project working on the issue. We look forward to what you have learned. You have a bit more than one sentence, seven uh, minutes roughly, to a bit share your views on the issue and what you learned from the discussion. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Georg, and also thank you very much to all of you, as this uh, has been really a very rich uh, exchange, I believe. Of course, uh, we went into some of the details, but uh, I guess there's a lot more that we would love to, to have conversations about. And I think that invitation from Christoph to do that also in demonstration sites is, I think, a very important one. Um, so I yeah, would like to, to zoom out a little bit again, just to, yeah, give a little bit our perspectives from IECN uh, on, on this topic. And uh, we're indeed very pleased that we could organize this exchange together with the European Forest Institute as partners, uh, working together on a number of, of very important forest related uh, developments and, and projects. And um, I think what for us stands out is, is of course, that forests are very complex uh, ecological processes, essential in steering our climate cycles, uh, but also uh, so essential for our health and well-being. And uh, to restore the health of these important ecosystems is, is in our view, uh, one of the most important missions of this century. Uh, knowing that forests are the habitats of more than three quarters of the world species, that they provide all these services, as we mentioned, uh, carbon storage, but also I think uh, water, uh, which hasn't been reflected so strongly in this conversation as, as forested watersheds provide 75% of the world's accessible drinking water. And uh, we know also how that is under threat. Uh, of course, the climate change challenges, the forest fires and, and many of the other issues that we're all very well aware of. Um, I just wanted to also mention uh, some numbers. I thought I saw a question about that from one of the participants. Um, we've done a European red list of trees uh, a year ago, which uh, has assessed the conservation status of Europe's tree species native to Europe and found that 42% of the trees regionally are threatened with extinction. Uh, many of the reasons are, uh, course already mentioned, uh, invasive avian species on sustainable logging, but also urban development and climate change are, are key to those threats. And uh, just to emphasize again that uh, about only half of, of Europe's forest habitats uh, as listed under the EU Habitats Directive are in favorable conservation status. Uh, so um, with the increasing demands and also climate related challenges, uh, yeah, I think we all are aware of, of what that means uh, for the future. Um, the European Green Deal, this new forest strategy and many of the other legislative frameworks that were mentioned 
are, uh, I think, a strong foundation to achieve this mission uh, for restoring the health of our forests. Um, but there are a few critical aspects, we believe, uh, in achieving that. Uh, one of them is that uh, this, this part of the natural diversity of systems is, is key. And we see, of course, around the world, many initiatives for tree planting. Um, but unfortunately, we also see many initiatives that are harmful for biodiversity, but also uh, not optimizing the carbon potential and also the economic yield. So in, in our European implementation, uh, I think it's really essential uh, to, to bring this together. And I think many of you also said that this is something we can only do by uh, focusing on that local level of knowledge and uh, also the diversity that we see in forests. Um, which also brings me to that point of how we can assure that uh, the services that forests provide and the important role that forest owners and managers and actors on the ground have in delivering on these services needs to be compensated for. And there we see a very important role in bringing together the climate and biodiversity uh, plans, but also financing schemes, as uh, we believe there is a lot more space for integrating the role of nature in the national uh, determined contributions, uh, but also uh, in tapping into some of the public and private uh, financing mechanisms uh, for uh, investments in these natural solutions uh, that are not uh, as strongly reflected yet in, in the, the climate plans, uh, but also in the recovery actions. Um, of course, such integration um, means that we need to give economic value to some of the aspects of nature that are not part of our current business models and uh, are not reflected in, in GDP as a main measure of, uh, of economic growth. And uh, therefore, I think we need to find ways to bring nature into that economy as a common good uh, and to create such regenerative business models. And, and Pierre also, of course, highlighted how challenging that can be in, in upscaling that uh, to a larger level. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the, the, uh, the forest strategy has a lot of entry points for actions that can help to move into that direction. Um, but of course, political will and, and, and legally binding actions are also essential here. Uh, from ICN side, um, yeah, in terms of action for uh, restoration, we have, of course, our commitments for the Bonn Challenge at the recent ICN World Congress. A number of countries around the world uh, have made new commitments for restoring lands up to 5.5 million hectares from these countries that recently joined France, uh, the region uh, of the south of France has joined in this. Um, but of course, uh, we also have the support from the go German government who allocated 20 million euros to establish forest, a forest landscape restoration technical expert hub. And um, these are of course global actions um, and uh, do not all reflect immediately in, in our actions in Europe. But uh, we also know of many other initiatives that focus on that, uh, that role of, of local action. And one of our partners, the Restore Initiative, uh, brings different actors, businesses, consumers, investors, and these local communities and forest owners together uh, to realize uh, such ideas. And they're at the moment uh, getting ready to launch a global initiative that really looks at these local actions and, and how forest and uh, owners and local communities can benefit from new uh, investment schemes, uh, but also uh, awareness among consumers and, and, and basically people around the world on, on how important forests are, uh, but also to, to create new returns for these services that forests provide. Um, ICN has also uh, developed a standard, a global standard for nature-based solutions, which for us is also a pathway to create more awareness of the value of nature, but also to look at effective ways of bringing that balance between the different functions that forests have. And uh, of course, we are well aware of, of many of the initiatives that the European Forest Institute is working on to make nature part of this circular bioeconomy, uh, which we believe is also essential. So I think I'll, I'll leave it here. And uh, I'd like to thank again everyone for this valuable and rich exchange. And I would also like to highlight that IECN, through its global and European network of experts and member organizations, both governments, NGOs, and private sector partners, and actually a new category 
category of members that has joined us now uh, with a motion that was adopted at the ICN Congress, which are subnational governments who can now also join our union, that we would like to continue this conversation and would like to also help in, in, in creating the dialogue across sectors, across different disciplines and uh, with all of you. And uh, we're really looking forward to, to that, to work together to implement uh, the EU forest strategy. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Santa. Um, we move directly on to Mark Palari, Director of the European Forest Institute. Thank you, Georg. Uh, let me start by thanking all the speakers and panelists for the great contributions and also all the participants for very stimulating and, and intense debate, but also very civilized. So thank you. Many things have been said. So I would like to share with you five reflections, five points that I have elaborated listening all of you, including Chantal, who provided very, very good inputs. Uh, first reflection, I would like to start with the big picture. Uh, let's remember that the climate and biodiversity crisis, and you can include here the current pandemic, are not different crises. They are just different phases, different consequences of the same fundamental problem, our economic system, a linear fossil-based economy that is addicted to fossil resources and to growth at all costs, that has basically failed to value nature. And one of the reasons that it has failed to value nature, Chantal has just mentioned, is because the way we measure our economy through GDP. And the challenge has been that when the measure becomes a target is not any longer a good measure, and this is what has happened with GDP. So it is quite clear that in the next two decades, we need to put forward probably the greatest economic transformation in human history. If you look at the speed and scale of change that we need to put forward to achieve a climate neutral and nature positive economy. And of course, this transformation also requires simultaneously as one of the first steps to measure our economy in a different way, to measure what really matters. Yeah? well-being, health, nature, biodiversity. Because at the very end, we need a new economy where life and not consumption becomes its true engine and its true purpose. Yeah? This brings me to my second reflection. So we are in an era of transformation and we need to look at our forests within this transformative context. I say this because still many people, many policymakers, many sectors, look at our forests as a tool to compensate for a broken economic system, a linear fossil-based economy. While I see our forests as probably the best tool we have to transform our economic system. So my second reflection is, let's look at our forests with circular bioeconomy lenses and not with linear fossil economy lenses, and we will see them as transformative tools not as tools to compensate for the broken system, eh? to compensate for emissions so that we can continue or, or it can take longer this transformation that is urgently needed. My third reflection goes towards the following. In order to unlock the transformational potential of our forests, we need first to understand and realize that forests are complex long-term systems. Many of you have emphasized that. So, and this is a challenge because policymaking operates in very short cycles, relatively short cycles compared to how we should look at our forests, long-term complex systems. So the only good short-term approach regarding forest and forestry is the long-term approach. And this is crucial to understand. And I will put you an example that has been already mentioned by several of you. If you look at the last five decades in Europe, Europe as a continent has managed, and this is very remarkable, to simultaneously increase the forest surface, the forest growing stock, the forest carbon sink, and the wood that we harvest from our forest. Or all that by also expanding the extent of forest protected areas. This explains that European forests, EU forests, which represent only 4% of the world forest, are responsible for more than 40% of the world's forest export product values, forest products export value. So that you can contextualize this figure, Russia hosts more than 20% of the world forest. 
but the Russian forest sector is responsible for about 4% of the world's forest products export value. If you look also at the zinc, Russian forest, 20% of the world forest have a zinc that is two, three times larger than the EU, while Russian forests are more than five times the extension of the EU forest. Why I am making this reflection? Because if you look at the long term in the case of Europe, you can see yeah, that increasing a carbon sink can be in, syn in synergy with increasing harvesting of having an economic, reliable and viable sector. The challenge we are facing, and this is why the polarization is increasing, is that if you look at the short term, you will see harvesting and sinks as a trade-off. Well, if you look at, if you change the perspective and you look at the long term, harvesting and sink can be synergistic. Eh? So this is the point, and this is why it's so important that we look at foresting the long term. And the same will go for bioeconomy and biodiversity in the broad sense. If you look at the short term, you will only accentuate the polarization because you will see them as a trade-off. If you look in the long term, the change, uh, the, the figure is different. And this brings me to my fourth reflection, which is about the future. Uh, the decade that starts, we are going to see an unprecedented forest situation, not only in Europe, but in many other parts of the world. And this uh, unprecedented situation is explained by two main, not only, but two main structural changes. The first one is climate change. The impacts of climate change and natural disturbances is going to be unprecedented in many of European forests. We are already seeing that for a few years. Yeah? The second the structural change is that the forest based sector is going to face also on forestry, including here, unprecedented opportunities related to its potential to deliver renewable, low carbon solutions to replace many of the fossil products in many sectors that will need to become climate neutral and circular in the next two decades. So the key of the questions, the main challenge, in my opinion, for policymakers and scientists is to use the emerging economic traction of all these new opportunities that are coming in order to finance and implement the adaptation measures, biodiversity measures that our forests need to stay resilient to climate change. This is the key. And to do that, we need integrative approaches. Yeah? We need to overcome the current polarization. The forest sector, forest industry, forest companies need to realize that investing in biodiversity is the priority number one if they want a resilient long-term business. So it's on their own interest. But at the same time, we need to realize that enhancing biodiversity in the long term requires a dynamic forest sector because we will need investments, philanthropy, NGOs, even public funding is not enough to enhance biodiversity here. Forest owners need to take the lead, forest companies, the sector itself. So we need the right incentives to stimulate that. And I don't, I don't think that there is any other, any forest owner, any forest company that doesn't want to increase biodiversity in the future. Yeah? Again, we need to look at things in the very long term because we are talking about long-term uh, forest systems. And so, my fourth reflection is integrative approaches to overcome the dichotomy between bioeconomy and biodiversity because basically they are two sides of the same coin. And this brings me to my fifth reflection, five, fifth point. Yes, forests are complex systems, but we should not make them complicated. It's not the same complexity as making things complicated. So they are complex systems, but we need to avoid making them complicated. And to avoid making them complicated, we need a transparent, open science policy practice in dialogue. It is clear that the current EU forest strategy has not been the result of an open and structured science policy debate. This is clear, but okay. We can still put it forward for the future implementation of the new strategy. And here I would like to say that EFI, which consists of more than 120 member organizations, including leading universities and research institutions in Europe, but also consists of 29 European countries. So we are de facto the largest science policy platform in the world, is available to collaborate with any actor that wants a constructive, constructive dialogue on the future of, of uh, European forests. I am very happy that Forest Europe process has already asked EFI to play a crucial role. So we will be there for Forest Europe, which is a pan-European 
uh, process, as you know. I hope that in the future also other European actors will see in EFI a, a solid partner to move forward the European forest strategy. So thank you again for, for participating in this event and it has been a pleasure to organize this with IUCN. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, and thanks to both of you, to Chantal and Mark, for putting us a bit in, in a product perspective also, and also making some interesting remarks for the time to come. I don't want to add any further reflection. We have heard enough of interesting reflections by the previous speakers and the panelists. The only thing I want to share, I have always, after these webinars, a bit the impression there's so many interesting things that I would like to go deeper, that I would like to understand better, that I would like to continue discussing. And the good news is here, we don't do this now, you can go for lunch, but there is an opportunity to do this. There, perhaps, uh, can you share uh, the slide, Susanna? There are two more events uh, coming. One is already tomorrow, um, organized here by the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, the topic is the new European forest strategy. And having looked at the program, I think there will be complementary partly to um, the things we have seen here. So if you haven't registered, just do it and you can continue discussing and learning more. And then in the Sincere project, together with the Nobel project, we will have a more academic research-based conference, but also with business partners, with policymakers on incentives for forest ecosystem services in Europe, connecting science, practice and policy on the 28th and 29th of September. So you can continue discussing and I think next to these two events, there are many, many more integrated activities have been mentioned already. Having said this, I would really like to thank, um, it has been done already, but I want to repeat it to all our speakers and panelists. You've done a great job um, in bringing the different perspectives on together. We have seen a lot of, um, also let's say, openings for, for interesting discussions now that the strategy is there. Um, so really thanks for taking the time and being available uh, for two hours, um, responding to questions, some of them uh, are, well, and, and, and engaging in a discussion. I would really also like to thank from EFI side, IUCN, especially also, well, Chantal, we have seen, but also Susanna Jorfra, who worked a lot in the back and made this technically possible that we are this meeting. And I would like to thank also our EFI team, Sarah Adams, Sagata Consul, Marco Lovridge, and obviously our director, whom we have seen just now speaking. Finally, we are really grateful to the funders of the activities. One is the European Commission, the Sensia project, um, but also the BNL uh, and BAFU, the Swiss BAFU in the Integrate Network, and all the many more uh, countries that are engaging there. Yeah, and then finally, thanks to all of you uh, participants. We had a high number of participants. Obviously, this topic raises a lot of interest. We had really interesting discussions. This will continue. And also, I think all the collaboration with IUCN in Integrate and Sincere will continue, perhaps other projects to come. And we hope that we provide with that one of the platforms to really discuss forest issues, environmental issues related to forestry uh, in a, a bit more informal setting. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will be with us then next time. And I hope I didn't forget anything I was supposed to say. I look at Chantal. Did I forget anything important? Great. Then thank you very much for having been there. And have a nice day. Enjoy your lunch. And see you then next time in one of the events relating to the EO forest strategy or other forest policy topics. Thank you.